Alright, now that Cell's out, I think I'm gonna have to play it a little slower than I was before. Eh, it should be okay. He only has one Super Saiyan Vegeta just to help him out. <laughs> it's a lot longer than I remember. So, th th they definitely extended this in some patch I must have missed, right? Okay, okay, it's getting a little comically ridiculous now. I, I, I just want a movement. If the assist could just end, that would be great. Okay, I get it. Yeah, no, I'm dropping my controller. Yeah, nope, no problems here. Yep, yeah, okay. Okay, oh, and it ended and he dragon rushed me. Oh, that was beautiful. Top quality block shrink. How's it going, everybody? Dato Doi here with another Should You Play video for Dragon Ball Fighters. this time focused around Super Saiyan Vegeta. As per usual in this series of videos, we'll be going over the character's pros and cons, and then talking about where they fit in on a team in Dragon Ball Fighters. With the overall goal being, of course, to see whether or not this character is even worth your time as a player. Now, since this series is known for its analytical eye, let's go ahead and break down in depth the many nuances of the cons of Vegeta. Vegeta. <sighs> There's a... There are no cons. Yeah, as it turns out, I had a really hard time thinking of any big cons for Super Saiyan Vegeta. As you'll find out throughout the rest of this video, if Vegeta isn't just great in an area, he is at least either very good in that area or decent enough to the point where he's above most other characters anyway. And you might be asking, well, a character without cons, doesn't that affect character diversity? Nah, not really. But more seriously, now we can move on to the pros of Vegeta, and there genuinely are a lot of them. Let's go ahead and start with the biggest of them all, Vegeta's assist. For my money, hands down the best assist in the game. You can easily use it in the neutral, easily use it to extend combos, and easily use it to keep the opponent in block. Now admittedly, when your opponent is blocking this, he does have the options to either reflect in the middle of getting hit by it or super dash, but limiting your opponent's options in any way is always a good thing in my eyes. And just a little side note for people new to the game, back in the day, if you blocked Vegeta's assist, there was no reflecting, no super dashing, you just had to sit there and block the entire thing, as well as the mix-ups that their point cell character was trying to lay into you. It was truly a wild time. Vegeta was on pretty much every team because why wouldn't you run him? And even with the big nerf to Vegeta's assist, that's still sort of a problem we face today. And that's because Vegeta as a character was more than just his assist. He's also really decent in every other area of the game. In his neutral, he has his amazing air key blast to keep his opponent at bay while also being able to react to anything their opponent does in reaction to his key blast. Vegeta is also one of the few characters in this game that has access to a DP in the form of his rising knee, so that's always a big plus being able to escape from unreal pressure from your opponent. It's also good for wake up scenarios. And Vegeta's normals are also actually pretty good. And he also does have a low hitting 2L, so he's okay in that area as well. And all of these reasons are why you always see Super Saiyan Vegeta making crazy comebacks at tournaments. It's because his assist is good, so they keep him in the back. And even if he is eventually forced out on the field as the last character on his team, he has so many amazing tools that he has access to, as well as being able to do some pretty insane combos with meter. So if Arxis's goal really was to make Super Saiyan Goku and Super Saiyan Vegeta the Ryu and Ken of this game, I'd say they knocked it out of the park. Both are super fantastic in this game just because of how well they play with the systems. As for where Vegeta goes on a team, let's not even kid ourselves, we all know that he's great in any position, but you'll most likely want to keep him in either the mid or the anchor position. Again, his assist is just that good. But the positioning on the team is always the easy part when it comes to Vegeta. The hard part is picking the team that Vegeta goes on. And for this, I've drawn up a couple of teams for you, literally all of them. You can play any team you want. It doesn't matter. No jokes. No jokes this time around. Just pick literally Vegeta and any other character and you're good to go. So is Vegeta worth your time as a player? Yes, no matter what type of player you are actually, whether it be beginner or expert, you're probably in a position where you can be getting a lot out of playing this character. Now I know this video has been nothing but praise for Vegeta, but just because he's good doesn't mean he's as good as some of the other top tiers in the game. <coughs> Bardock. That's right, I said Bardock. But hey, Hey, maybe we'll cover Bardock in the next episode, if that's what you guys want to see. As always, you can go down in the comments and let me know who you want to see covered in the next episode of the Should You Play series, as well as letting me know your thoughts on Super Saiyan Vegeta and Dragon Ball Fighters down below as well. While you're down there, if you like this video and this channel, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe, it really does help the channel out. And hey, maybe click on a few of the other videos on your screen right now. I do all sorts of videos on Dragon Ball Fighters, including rank matches, and I also cover other fighting games. If any of that sounds good to you, those videos should be good to go. As always, I'm Dato Doya. I'll see you in the next video.